these are the kind of places I like to go look for pika. Pika is a little little rabbit, very tiny rabbit. In fact, it's the smallest rabbit in North America. It's about the size of my fist. And they live in these rock talus slopes. Oh, there's one right there. They look kind of like a cross between <laughs> a, a mouse and a rabbit and a guinea pig. They have no tail. They've got little mouse ears. They've got a rabbit face. Real interesting little guys to, to photograph these pika. A couple ways to find them. Uh, one is you look for motion, the other is you listen for that characteristic call, kind of a chi chi sound. Raspy, kind of a chi chi. And then you can kind of locate them that way too. Once you find them, they're not all that easy to photograph. They're really quick when they move and they hold perfectly still when they're not moving. I mean, they don't even hardly breathe. It's just really difficult to see, especially against these rocks. They're kind of the same color. So they're difficult to photograph. When they move, they move uh, really quick, but not very far, generally. And then they sit up on a rock and they chew or they look at you or whatever again. And sometimes with a, a, a long telephoto lens, it can be difficult to keep them in the viewfinder. You gotta get your head out of the viewfinder now and then and follow them with your eye, locate where they are, set up uh, some kind of a landmark close to them that you can recognize in the viewfinder and then try to locate them again. It's the fastest way to do it. Uh, if you don't do that, you'll get lost and they'll move again while you're trying to find them. And it can be a little frustrating at times that way. But when you do get some good shots, it's a lot of fun. Their lifestyle is even more amazing than the creature themselves. You know, they choose to live, we're, we're at 11,500 feet and there's probably a colony in these rocks around us here of several hundred pika. And because they're rabbits, they don't hibernate. And right here in this spot, there'll be on a good year, 20, 25 feet of snow in the winter time. And these guys spend the entire summer running around the rocks and just outside of the rocks, gathering up these grasses that you see. They bring them back into the, to the rocks and they pile them up and they dry them out in the sun. And then all winter long, they can come up under the rocks where, it's, where the snow doesn't get to them, can come up underneath that haystack and pull that grass out and that's what they survive on. Sometimes uh, wildlife photography is a matter of luck. Uh, this is not one of those times. We found the goats. We conveniently had a road to get in here that allowed us to uh, hide ourselves from the goats periodically so that we weren't in view all the time. There's a herd of about 60 goats here. We worked our way in very slowly, very carefully. One thing that's characteristic of goats is they don't pick up and run a long ways like a deer or an elk would. Sometimes they'll walk away, sometimes they'll come right back. There's some goats right up here coming right back to us right now. Right now I'm, I've got goats within uh, 100 feet on three sides of me. And they're laying down or, or they're licking the, the mineral lick that's natural on the ground. They're just behaving normally. They're even chasing each other a little bit. They're coming towards us. Uh, they're pretty much milling around as if we weren't here at all. And the reason for that is because we're not moving around a lot. We're not being real noisy. We're not making any fast, threatening type kinds of movement. And uh, they don't seem to mind that we're here because we're behaving the way a wildlife photographer should behave. And that's with planning and careful movement. Uh, this is great. They're moving right back in towards us. <laughs> 